welcome again to this particular session. So we begin the session today with 1.18. Now Breeze and Company having its branch at City X and goods are invoiced to the branch at 25% profit on sale. Now this is the line we have, uh, which would need your attention because this is the question in which uh, rate of profit is based not on cost rather on sale. And remember one thing sale or invoice price is absolutely one and same unless and until I would actually give some other directions regarding that. So far, what I have told you is that selling price and invoice price are one and same thing. So you may, you may also say that 25% profit on invoice price, this time rate is given or 25% on sale price, one and same thing. So first thing is that we need to actually uh, compute the rate. Now cost price plus margin is equal to selling price as we know, selling price or invoice price. Rate is based upon selling price or invoice price, so we shall consider invoice price as 100, correct? And margin this time is 25, so your cost will be equal to 75. We have to consider 100 invoice price or selling price because this time rate is based upon sale. So we will consider sale price or invoice price as 100, then 25 and cost price will be equal to 25. And no doubt about that. After that, I will write 25 in the numerator, in the denominator, I will write invoice price. So, rate of loading will be equal to 1 by 4. So, this will be your rate, correct? Now, we have been given opening stock 40,000. I need to require to tell you where I am going to put opening stock towards the debit side of the branch account and later on, I am also going to take the loading of this particular item. So, let's start the, now solving this particular question first. Let me actually stretch a line. So this is the line I have stressed now. And this is your branch account. And then we will prepare branch data's account also. In order to prepare the branch data's account, again I will stretch a line. I think this much is enough. Correct. So now we have stressed the line. Now we can move over to the solution part. This is 1.18. This is the question which we are picking up. So this is our branch account. And branch data's account. So first of all, let me begin. Let me write first of all here opening balances. As far as your opening balance is concerned, that is with respect to stock. Opening stock, first of all, we will write here. Amount of opening stock is 40,000. This is, of course, at invoice price. I have been telling you right from the beginning of this particular topic that if question is of invoice price or loading, and irrespective of the fact whether rate of loading is based upon cost price or what we call invoice price below, whatever items related to goods will be there, those items will be considered at invoice price. This is very important. Now we move over to the opposite side and towards the opposite side, I will write here loading. Loading on opening stock. Loading on opening stock. 40,000. Rate of loading is equal to 1 by 4. So I will write 1 by 4 and amount of loading will be equal to 10,000. So this question should not pose you any difficulty. After that we have got daters. So I will write here opening daters or simply daters. Daters is equal to 25,000. So I will write here 25,000. And since we are preparing daters account also, in the data's account, first of all, let me write here, data's account. 
and in the debtors account let me write here balance brought down opening balance of debtors happens to be 25000 so i will write here 25000 correct then we have got cash in hand cash in hand cash in hand means petty cash which whenever it will be written cash in hand you construe it as petty cash so cash in hand is given cash in hand cash in hand given to you is equal to 1000 you will write here 1000 then we have been given office furniture office furniture amount of office furniture in this particular case is 4000 so these are the opening balances correct furniture is an asset it is not good so don't take the loading of what we call office furniture loading is always with respect to opening stock closing stock goods sent to branch goods return goods in transit and later on we will face goods transferred only these items will be considered for the purpose of loading then we have goods invoice from head office so towards the debit side of the branch account i will write two goods sent to branch account so this year head office has sent one lakh eighty thousand worth of goods at invoice price quite obviously now you are going to move to the opposite side and you will extract the loading portion so towards the opposite side i write load on goods sent to branch account load on goods sent to branch account one lakh eighty thousand into one by four how much it will be equal to one lakh eighty thousand divided by four is equal to forty five thousand so forty five thousand will be your loading and you are going to write it towards the credit side then we have got in this case goods return towards the credit side of the branch account first of all i will write goods sent to branch account and returns so goods returned to head office is equal to six thousand so this is the transaction which is taking place between branch and head office that is why it will find place in the branch account and obviously now i will have to extract the loading portion so i will write here load on Good send to branch returns. 6000 is the amount and loading will be equal to 1 by 4. So 1500 will be loading portion. Now we have been given goods returned by daters. Now this is a transaction which is taking place between daters and branch. So it will find place only in the daters account. In the daters account, I will write goods returned by daters. Goods returned by daters means sales return. Goods returned by daters. Goods returned by daters amount is equal to 1250. We cannot take the loading of these goods because loading only related to such goods is extracted which are flowing between the what we call head office and the branch. These goods are flowing between the branch customers or the branch daters and the branch. So we cannot extract the loading of these goods. Then we have been given cash sales and credit sales. So cash sales, first of all, I will write under the remittances. Remittances. I will write here cash sales. Amount of cash sales is how much? Amount of cash sales given to you is one lakh twenty thousand. So I will write here one lakh twenty thousand. Then we will take the credit sales, and we know that credit sales find place only in the debtors account. Credit sales are never ever written directly in the branch account. Amount of credit sales is equal to seventy thousand. In the debtors account, I will write seventy. Then in this question, we have been given cash receipt from daters also. Under the remittances, I will write cash from daters. Cash from daters. Cash from daters given to you in this case is 65,000. So you will write here 65,000. Because we are preparing daters account also. So cash receipt from daters will also get a place towards the credit side in the daters account. Cash from daters amount is actually cash received from daters 65,000. Now this is a transaction 
which involves all the three parties head office branch office and branch customer first of all branch customer have sent the cash to the, the what we call branch so this transaction is taking place between branch customer and branch that is why it is finding place in the debtors account and further whatever cash is received by the branch is always sent back to head office so that is also that is the reason why cash received from debtors also find place in the branch account then we have got discount allowed to debtors now discount is always given to debtors by branch only this is a, this is the transaction between what we call branch and branch debtors so that is why discount will find place only in the debtors account 300 rupees is the amount expenses paid by head office so first of all we will move over to the debit side of the branch account we will write here to bank and expenses are staff welfare expenses staff welfare expenses 750 then we have telephone expenses telephone expenses are 4000 besides that we have salary also amount of salary is four amount of salary is 4000 and telephone expenses are actually 1200 1200 then we have got in this case miscellaneous expenses paid by branch now other miscellaneous expenses paid by branch these expenses are not paid by head office these are paid by branch so how will i treat these expenses this is very important from the cash in hand which branch manager was having in the beginning I will subtract this 700 and I will write the closing balance of cash in hand towards the credit side. Balance carried down. Whatever cash balance or cash in hand branch was having in the beginning. You can see here branch in the beginning was having a cash of 1000. So now I will subtract expenses paid by branch from this amount expenses 700 i will subtract from here and now i will write 300 in the outer column this is how you are going to treat it depreciation you know that depreciation cannot be reflected directly in the branch account because under this system i so many times i've already told you head office with respect to branch actually prepares only branch account and branch debtors account no other account is maintained we are not maintaining any real account. So that is the reason we cannot straightway write depreciation. So in order to put depreciation in the branch account, what I will do now, see here, furniture. Opening balance of furniture was given to us as 4000. So I will write here 4000. I will subtract the depreciation now. Amount of depreciation is 10%, so 400 I will subtract and 3600 I will write towards the opposite side. Indirectly, it means I am putting 4000 worth of furniture towards the debit side in the branch account and 3600 towards the credit side, the difference actually is 400. So when we write opening balance of furniture and closing balance of furniture, actually what we are doing is that we are simply putting up amount of depreciation in the branch account. Then we have got in this case closing stock. I will write here closing stock. Amount of closing stock given to you is 35,000. So you will write here 35,000. Need not require to tell you that ultimately we will need to pluck out the loading load on closing stock. Load on closing stock will be equal to 35,000 into 1 by 4. So 35,000 into 1 by 4, how much? 35,000 divided by 4 is equal to 8750. So I will write here 8750. So before we tally this particular account, correct, we must see to it that whether all the items related to daters are available or not. For example, opening data, cash receipt from daters, and closing data. Now, in this particular question, closing daters are not given to us. So I will have to find the amount of closing daters. So I will tell it and I will see what is the amount of closing datas. 
25,000 opening balance plus 70,000 credit sales minus 65,000 minus 1250 and minus 300. So what I get 28,450. This is my balance carried down and this is the balancing figure. 28,450. 28,450 will be your amount of closing datas. Now in the branch account, this is your branch account, you will write closing datas. Amount of closing datas is equal to 28,450. 28,450. So now we are in a position to tell you this account. Is it clear to you? So, when you will tell you your net profit transferred must be equal to 47,150. Your net profit must be equal to 47,150. Net profit. This is how you are going to solve this question. Not a very tough one. Correct? Now, after this one, we move over to the next one. And next one is, honestly speaking, not quite easy question. At the same time, not very tough. First, let me make the framings. And then it's a pretty long question. I think this much is enough, and then I will prepare. Branch data account, correct? Now, in this question from the details given below relating to Nanital branch for the year ended 31st March 2020, prepare Nanital branch account in the books of head office, correct? Further, it is written that uh, goods are sent to the branch, just wait. Just wait. It seems, just allow me. It's okay now, You're right. From the details given below relating to Nainital branch for the year ended 31st of March 2020, prepare Nainital branch account in the books of head office. Goods are sent at 20% on selling price, similar to the last question. Suppose if I am going to ask you how you are going to compute what we call 20% on selling price. First, you will write here cost price, correct? Then you will write margin. Then you are going to write invoice price or selling price. Remember, remember one thing, invoice price or selling price are one and same thing. Now, because rate is given on selling price, so I will consider selling price as 100. Margin will be equal to 20 and obviously your cost price will be equal to 80. So, I will write now 20 divided by 100. So, my rate of loading on invoice price will be equal to 1 by 5. Correct? Opening stock is given to us and later on we are going to pick up the loading also 1000. Daters we will simply write in the daters account furniture opening balance. But we will first write daters in the opening balance then the daters account furniture opening balance petty cash opening balance. Insurance prepaid on 1-4-2019. So this time insurance prepaid opening balance is also given. Last year you might have actually paid the expenses last year. Correct? 
and last year these were closing prepaid now they will be brought forward as opening prepaid 50 now this is the first question where we are finding that even a liability balance is there in the beginning salary due that is 1000 in case of assets we write opening balances towards the debit side so quite obviously liability opening balances will be put towards the credit side then goods sent, sent to branch is given we will take the loading later on loading will be equal to one fifth eight thousand then total sales are given to you as fifty five thousand and total sales uh, sorry cash sales are fifty five and total sales are seventy that means credit sales are fifteen thousand correct Cash receipt from daters is also given to you. Goods returned by branch is given to you. Goods returned by daters also. Since these are the expenses, <coughs> this time head office has sent cash for rent, as you can see, for rent 3600. And then we have sent cash for salaries. We will write simply two cash. And we and this time head office has also sent cash to meet petty expenses. So 600 worth of petty cash is further sent to the uh, branch office and cash sent to branch for insurance. And this time here it is written insurance up to June 2020. What does it would mean? I will let you know in a short while. Then petty expenses paid by branch is actually uh, 500, stock is 3000 and depreciation on furniture is 20%. So this is the question. So first of all, I will write here in the books of head office branch account, in the books of head office, in the books of head office, I am going to write here branch account, then I am going to write balance brought down, opening stock is given to us, opening stock is 5000. Towards the opposite side, I will write here loading on opening stock. Load on opening stock. Opening stock is 5000. Rate of loading is also 1 by 5. So I will write 1000 as the loading amount. Then we have got in this particular case, daters. I will write here daters. Amount of daters given to us is equal equal to 2000. So I will write here 2000. And because we are preparing daters account also, so in the daters account, I will write here balance brought down. Opening balance of daters is 2000. I will write here 2000. Then we have been given furniture. Furniture is 1000. So F oblique F, that is furniture, 1000. Then we have got petty cash. I will simply write here petty cash. Lots of opening balances are given in this particular question. Petty cash is 200. And importantly, insurance prepaid. Insurance prepaid. Insurance prepaid is actually 50. I will write here 50. Correct? So these are the what we call opening balances. Similarly, I will write here balance brought down. These are the ba opening balances of assets. But this time there is opening balance of salary outstanding or salary due. So opening balance of liability will be written towards the credit side 1000. This is how you are going to write. Then we have been given goods sent to branch account. Goods sent to branch account is equal to 40,000. So I'm going to write here goods sent to branch account 40,000. Of course, I'm going to take the loading also. So I'm going to write here load on goods sent to branch account 40,000 into 1 by 5 that is equal to 8000 8000 will be your loading then cash sales is given to us so because cash sales is given to us i will write here first of all remittances
under the remittances i am going to write cash sales amount of cash sales is 55000 then we have been given total sales total sales is 70000 so the difference of cash sales and what we call total sales will be your credit sales so credit sales you are going to put towards the debit side credit sales total sales 70 minus your cash sales that is equal to 55000 so you are going to write here 15000 this is how you are going to put credit sales then we have got in this case cash receipt from debtors 16000 cash from debtors as you know is written under remittances so cash from debtors cash from debtors given to you is 16000 you are going to write here 16000 and because you are preparing debtors account Cash from debtors will also be written over here. Sixteen thousand. Then we have been given in this particular question. Goods returned by branch. Goods returned by branch is actually five hundred. So I will write towards the credit side. Goods sent to branch returns and returns amount is 500 i will take the loading also i will write here goods sent to branch returns loading 500 into 1 by 5 so 100 will be loading very next item is goods returned by daters now these goods have been returned by daters so towards the credit side of debtors account i will write here goods returned by debtors goods return it just it is suffice to write goods return because this is debtors account obviously it means goods have been returned by debtors and amount actually is 200 no question of any loading on goods returned by daters, correct? Because it is a transaction taking place between what we call branch and branch daters. Then we have got goods returned by daters after that cash sent for expenses. So head office has sent some cash. Head office has sent cash for rent. 3,600. It has sent cash for salaries also. So you will write salaries. Amount of salary is 10,200. Then it has also sent petty cash for petty cash. Some further cash is given in the form of petty cash to the branch manager. And amount as you can see actually is 600. Then some cash also has been sent to meet insurance expenses insurance expenses 400 then closing stock is given i will write here first of all balance carried down i will write here closing stock amount of closing stock given is 3000 so you will write here 3000 Correct. Then you will take the loading also. Load on. Closing stock. 3000. Into 1 by 5. 600 will be your loading. Then we have got. Depreciation on furniture. I will write here first of all furniture. Opening balance of furniture in the question is 1000. So I will write opening balance, then I will subtract the depreciation. Depreciation is 20%, that is 200. So I will write closing balance of furniture as 800. Similar to the last question, we are putting up opening balance here, closing balance here. That means we are simply or merely reflecting what we call amount of depreciation. 
However, we cannot show directly depreciation in the branch account simply because of the fact that we are not preparing an arrear account. Then, in between, they had given petty expenses incurred by branch. So, I will write here petty cash. Now, opening balance of petty cash was 200. 200 plus 600 because in the current year head office has said 600 more for petty expenses. So 200 opening balance, 600 have been sent. So total balance in the hands of the branch manager of petty cash is 800. However, out of that, he has spent 500. So that is why closing balance of petty cash will be equal to 300. Petty cash is also a real account. We cannot show pet, petty expenses 500 directly. We have written 200 here, 600 here, 800 and we have written 300 here. That means the difference of all these three items is nothing but petty expenses. So even petty expenses are shown in an indirect manner. So <clears throat> all these things are over. However, one more thing I will have to explain. But before that, let me also tell you debtor's account. If I am going to tell you debtor's account, 17,000 minus 16,200, so closing balance will be equal to 800. I will write here balance carried down. Eight hundred. So closing balance of data will be written in the branch account. Data's 800. Now, in this question, I have to explain this particular point, insurance up to June 2020. Before that, you also pay attention to the fact that this time your accounting year is ending on 31st of March 2020. So, what is the replication of all these things? Let me explain it. Your current year, as you can see, is starting on 1 4 2019. And current year is ending on 31st of March 2020. This is the end of the current period, as you can see, for the year ending 31st March 2020, correct? Now, in this particular question, your current year is ending on this particular date, correct? 31st of 3, 2020. However, as you can see in the question, it is clearly given that insurance expenses have been paid up to 30th of June. Up to 30th of June, we presume 30th of June is here. So that means insurance expenses have been paid till up to 30th of June 2019 means, see here. Insurance expenses are 400. So out of 400, out of 400, we can say, out of 400 worth of expenses, three months expenses are related to the next period. That is April, May, and June. So out of 400, I may say that rupees 100 worth of expenses are related to the next accounting period to the next accounting period. Are you getting my point or not? See, in accounts, unless and until otherwise stated, whatever expenses are given, we always presume that these expenses are meant for 12 months. That means if I am saying that head office has sent rupees 400 for insurance, where it is given, <coughs> head office has sent insurance 400, it means it is a period of 12 months. It is a period of 12 months. So, out of 12 months, 3 months are related to the next accounting period. So, that means when I will close the accounting on 31st of 3, 2020, I will say that closing prepaid, closing prepaid, closing prepaid expenses with respect to insurance is equal to 100. Because out of 400, 100 is related to the next period. Are you getting my point or not? So, in this question, 
When I will close the branch account, I will also write here insurance prepaid. Insurance prepaid. Insurance prepaid is 100. We will have to reflect it. If you remember, I also told you some time back that every opening balance with respect to asset, not with respect to liability, every opening balance must have a corresponding closing balance. So now we can say closing balance of insurance prepaid is 100. So this is how you will have to do this question. And now when you will finish it up, your net profit will be equal to 22,750. This is your net profit. Correct, 22,750. So this is the important point in this particular question. And as far as 1.20 is concerned, this, this question should not pose you any difficulty. 009 limited of city X as a branch at city Y. Goods are invoiced to the branch at selling price being cost plus 25%. So this time rate is based on cost price. 1.20. This time, your cost price, first of all, you write, you need to mention the equation, cost price plus margin is equal to invoice price. Because rate is clearly mentioned on cost, so you will consider cost as 100, your margin will be 25, invoice price will be equal to 125. So 25 by 125, 1 by 5 will be your rate of loading. So invoice price, opening stock, you are going to write it towards the debit side as I have written already here. And then you will take the loading one-fifth. Similarly, invoice value of closing stock is given in this question. Invoice value of closing stock, 30,000. You will write under balance carried down, closing stock, 30,000. And then you will take the loading also. Then Sunday daters, of course, these are opening Sunday daters. <laughs> You write here, date is not mentioned, 1-4-2021. So 24,000 you will write here and you will also put amount of daters in the daters account. Bad debts will find place only in the daters account. Cash sales, you know, are written under remittances, credit sale under daters. Goods supplied, 1,80,000, you are going to put it towards the debit side of the branch account. And besides that, you are going to take the loading also. Then... You will simply write to bank, under it you will write salary, rent and rates and sundry expenses and cash receipt from daters is also given. It's a pretty easy question, should not pose any difficulty to you. Next question is related to 1.21. 1.21 is an interesting question and here it is written following is the information of Jammu branch of best limited new delhi for the year ended 31st of 3 2020 goods are invoiced to the branch at cost plus 20 percent goods are invoiced to the branch at cost plus 20 percent 1.21 cost margin and invoice price rate of profit is based upon cost so cost margin 20 invoice price will become 120 so rate of loading will be 20 upon 120 rate of loading on invoice price rate of loading on invoice price means because in the denom denominator there is invoice price and difference of cost price and invoice price which is known as margin or loading we have written in the numerator so whenever we are going to apply this rate, as you know, because this is rate of loading on invoice price, this rate can be applied only on invoice price. So if you are going to apply this rate to an item which is at invoice price, remember one thing, you can apply this rate only to an item which is at an invoice price, quite simply because in the denominator we have invoice price. So when we apply this rate, what happens actually? The loading portion gets plugged out an item slides back to cost price. That means when we apply this rate to an item at invoice price, directly or indirectly, that item actually falls back to cost price. In this question, it is also given the sale price is cost plus 50%. Now, generally and so far, 
I was saying that invoice price and sale price are one and same thing unless and until stated otherwise. Now this time, unless and until stated otherwise is coming into the picture because sale price this time is given that sale price is cost plus 50%. Cost price plus margin. Now in this question invoice price and sale price are not one and same thing. Correct? Because this time it is given sale price is cost plus 50%. So if your cost is 100, margin will be 50 and selling price will be equal to 150. If you will apply a rate of 50 by 150, 50 in the numerator, in the denominator there is selling price. That means 1 by 3, if you are going to apply this rate, if you are going to apply this rate, first of all this rate can be applied on an item which is that selling price because below in the denominator we have selling price. Then that item will fall back to what we call cost price. You need to understand this. So all in all we may say in this particular question there are three types of prices which are coming into picture. There are three types of prices. One is cost price, cost price is 100. Another is invoice price in this question as we just saw invoice price was 120, 120 was it? Right, invoice price is 120 and we just saw that selling price is 150. Selling price is 150. Is it clear to you? I also mentioned the difference of cost price and invoice price is 20. And in the denominator I am writing invoice price. So. 1 by 6 I will call it as rate of loading on invoice price to convert invoice price into cost price. That means what if I am going to apply this rate on an item which is at invoice price that item will fall back to cost price. Similarly this time in this particular question there is another rate which we can frame out. We can take the difference between invoice price and selling price. The Difference between invoice price and selling price is 30 and if I am going to divide it by 150, this rate, what does this rate will reflect? First of all, rate will be equal to 1, 5, 1 by 5. Just pay attention, this, coming back to this rate, this rate is on invoice price. That means this rate can be applied only on an item which is at invoice price because in the denominator there is invoice price. So you can apply this rate only to an item which is at invoice price. If you will apply this rate, that item will come back to cost price. That is the significance of this rate. Similarly here, this rate in the denominator there is selling price that means you can apply this rate to an item which is at selling price and if you are going to apply this I, this rate that item will come back to invoice price because you have taken the difference between invoice price and selling price i hope actually you are getting what i am trying to make you understand besides that there is another possibility in this question now you take the difference of cost price and selling price which we just saw earlier also. The difference between cost price and selling price is 50. And if I divide it by 150, again this time below there is selling price. That means this rate 50 by 150 or you can say 1 by 3. That means this rate can be applied to an item which is at selling price. However, if you are going to apply this rate to an item which is at selling price, that particular item will fall back to cost price. I hope you got the intricacies of these rates. Is it clear to you? This is, the, this is the most important part of this particular question. However, we have been given opening stock on 142,029, 2,20,000. Please pay attention here. We have been given opening stock as 2,20,000. So in the books of head office, I will write opening stock 2,20,000. So many times I have told you, if the question is of invoice price, Items which will be given below will always be construed which um, shall always be presumed at invoice price unless and until otherwise stated. So it is at invoice price. I will have to bring it to the cost price. In order to bring it to the cost price, I will look into the rates which I just framed. This item is at invoice price. I just told you 20 by 120 
one by six. First, you take the difference between cost price and invoice price because your target is to bring this item to the cost price. So, cost price and invoice price rate is one by six. So, you will apply one by six to it as I have done here loading on opening stock 20 by 120 or one by six. Your loading will be equal to 36,667. Correct? Then, in the question, you have been given good send to branch. You will write here good send to branch account 11 lakh. Again, this item is at invoice price. This item is at invoice price. You will take the loading. Loading 20 by 120 or 1 by 6. This will be your loading. Then we have been given sales during the year. Amount of sales. Generally, in case of sales, if there is clearly not mentioned, if it is clearly not mentioned whether whether sales are on cash or on credit. Generally, we presume that sales are on credit. Remember one thing what I'm trying to say you. It is given that sales during the year is 12 lakh. Generally, such sales are construed or presumed to be at credit only if prefix cash or credit is not mentioned very clearly in the question. However, in this question, there is neither any opening data nor any closing data. That means in this case, forcefully we will have to presume that all these sales are on cash basis we shall presume that there are no credit transaction at all because no opening and closing data is given in the question so we shall presume these sales are cash so sales i will write here all sales are on cash basis actually you can write remittances then you can write cash sales 12 lakh and no question of cash from data because in this question there is no transaction related to data so you will write here 12 lakh Correct. Now expenses incurred, you will write here 45,000. Now very important thing is, in this question, the question is over now. Question is over. Only these four things are given to us. However, we have written opening stock towards the debit side. Just a moment ago and previous to that also, in the previous sessions also, I have been telling you and I have told you so many times, that unless and until otherwise stated, every opening balance of asset must have a corresponding closing balance because we have got opening stock we need to have closing stock in this question closing stock is not given i will have to find the closing stock this is the main question that you have to find out the closing stock in this question how will you find first of all you presume yourself to be the branch you are the branch you are not aware of cost price you are concerned with only invoice price because you are the branch and the head office i am sending you the goods at invoice price correct so in the beginning you are the branch you had two lakh twenty thousand worth of stock with you and this year i sent you 11 lakh worth of stock of course at invoice price so total stock available with you now is 13 lakh twenty thousand at invoice price you have 13 lakh twenty thousand worth of goods at invoice price with you you are the branch correct you have 13 lakh 20 thousand worth of goods 13 lakh 20 thousand worth of goods at invoice price quite obviously you are the branch you are the branch out of these goods you will sell some goods during the year some goods you will sell correct let us say in the current year just imaginary figure out of 3 lakh 20, 10 lakh worth of invoiced priced goods, 10 lakh worth of goods, whose invoice price was 10 lakh, you sold them and obviously you are going to sell them at slightly higher, higher price because in this question, it is clearly mentioned that sales are a bit higher than the invoice price. Let us say you sold these goods for uh, 13 lakhs. You sold these goods for 13 lakhs. Let us say for simplicity. Actually, this is the amount of your actual sale. And this is the amount of goods at invoice price. That means you are the branch and you in the current year out of 10 lakh, out of 13 lakh 20 thousand worth of goods which were available at your disposal, you sold out 10 lakh worth of goods for 13 lakh. Important thing is that out of these goods, you sold out 10 lakh worth of invoice price goods. So closing stock with you at the end shall be construed or shall be uh, presumed at 3 lakh 20 thousand. I took these as imaginary figure. Now in this question, in this question, what is happening? 
विदाउट एन आयोटा ऑफ डाउट यू आर हैविंग थर्टीन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड वर्थ ऑफ गुड्स एट इन वॉइस प्राइस एंड वी नो डेट सेल ऑफ ब्रांच इज एक्चुअली ट्वेल्व लैख सेल ऑफ ब्रांच एक्चुअली इज ट्वेल्व लैख वी नो करेक्ट सेल ऑफ ब्रांच इज एक्चुअली टू लैख सेल ऑफ ब्रांच इज ट्वेल्व लैख एंड वी नो डेट ब्रांच डज द सेल एट द रेट ऑफ वन फिफ्टी बिकॉज सेलिंग प्राइस इज वन I just want to know what is the invoice price of this twelve lakh. So, in order to know the invoice price, first of all, you have to think coolly. These these are at selling price. You have to convert it to invoice price. So, you take the difference of invoice price and selling price. The difference is thirty, and your rate was thirty by one fifty and one by five. I told you if you are going to apply this rate on selling price, then selling price will fall back to your invoice price. This is exactly my target here. So I am going to apply this rate thirty by one fifty or one by five. See here, I have taken thirty by one fifty. I have applied this rate now to twelve lakh. So two lakh forty thousand is the loading. So nine lakh sixty. What does this nine lakh sixty is? Just pay attention. I told you branch was having thirteen lakh fifty thousand worth of goods at invoice price for sale. Out of that, it is given that branch has done sale to the extent of twelve lakh. Branch has done sale to the extent of twelve lakh, but this is at selling price. I want to know the invoice price of these goods, which I I have been able to find out. And the invoice price actually of these goods is nine lakh sixty. That means out of thirteen lakh fifty thousand, nine lakh sixty thousand worth of invoiced priced goods have been sold by branch at twelve lakh. And how I am able to find out nine lakh sixty? Because I know the rate to convert selling price to invoice price, which is one by five. If I am going to apply one by five to twelve lakh, it will be equal to two lakh forty. So now I know. That out of twelve lakh, that your twelve lakh is the selling price, and nine lakh sixty thousand is their invoice price. That means branch in the current year sold out nine lakh sixty thousand worth of invoice price goods at rupees twelve lakh. Is it clear to you or not? So this is the main question. So that means out of twelve lakh, two lakh forty thousand is the margin. That is the difference between the selling price and the invoice price. You subtracted two lakh forty from it. You got nine lakh sixty thousand. So out of thirteen lakh twenty thousand, nine lakh sixty thousand worth of goods have been sold out. So we may say now that branch at the end is having closing stock at invoice price three lakh sixty. You are going to write three lakh sixty thousand. You find found out this figure through your workings, and don't forget to take the loading of this item. This is at invoice price. In order to turn invoice price to cost price, I will use the rate twenty by one twenty sixty thousand. So this is how you are going to <coughs> going to compute three lakh fifty five thousand. This is the main question in this particular case. Is it clear to you? I told you this is very very important question, and after having completed this question. you can also do 1.22 that i will talk about in the upcoming session correct so till then it's good bye